Hi, and welcome to the Business and Technology Podcast with Nicola Stradis, the show that discusses technology in business and business in technology, because the reality is that nowadays you cannot even separate the two. So this week we're discussing the New York Times decision to sue OpenAI and Microsoft, the creators of ChatGPT, for copyright infringement. Now. Before we jump into the actual story, let's discuss what ChatGPT is all about. According to the tool itself, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence language model developed by OpenAI. It is part of the GPT generative pre-trained transformer series of models designed to understand and generate human-like text based on the input it receives. ChatGPT uses deep learning techniques to comprehend context, understand language patterns, and generate coherent responses in conversations. Now, the definition goes goes to say that uh, this AI models has been trained on a vast amount of text from diverse sources on the internet, allowing to acquire knowledge about a wide range of topics and so on and so forth. Now, this definition, is what makes me wonder whether there will be any substance to copyright claims. After all, it is not a secret that the tool has been, and it continues to be trained by open source data that is available on the internet. Think of it like a baby that learns how to speak. This can only happen by giving it the relevant input. And if this is the case, can we regulate or should we consider regulating the technology itself? How do we ensure a safe and secure environment for original content creators without restricting innovation? Because originality is still part of the game and will continue to be no matter the advancements in AI technology. Of course. There are those who claim that there is a bit of politics involved into the story, but I happen to hate politics. So I'll rather focus on the story itself and the underlying parameters that may have led uh, the times to file the lawsuit. But let's dig into the actual story. The New York Times accused OpenAI and Microsoft of trying to and I'm quoting now, free ride on the Times' massive investment in its journalism by using it to provide alternative means to deliver information to readers. Quoting to the Times, and I'm quoting again, there is nothing transformative about using the Times' content without payment to create products that substitute for the Times and steal audiences away from it. Now, OpenAI has responded to that by saying that using copyright work to train AI products uh, amounts to fair use, which covers them for unlicensed use of copyrighted material. Notice the definitions used here. As according to the U.S. Copyright Office, transformative uses of material, i.e. those that add something new with a further purpose or different character and do not substitute for the original use of the work are likely to be considered fair by the court. And surely this is where the whole case will be based. It is worth noting that other content creators expressed their concerns in the past about the unauthorized use uh, of original content by artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. On the other side now, people in technology industry are also vocal in their opinion to copyright. In October 2023, Anderson Horowitz, a venture capital firm, an early backer of OpenAI wrote uh, in its comments uh, to the to the U.S. Copyright Office that exposing AI companies to copyright liability would either kill 
or significantly hamper them at their development. And I'm quoting now, the result will be far less competition, far less innovation, and very likely the loss of the United States' position as a leader in global AI development. That brings me to my conclusion. And I will close this episode with the same question that I asked at the beginning. Can we or should we consider regulating the technology? Surely we can add rules, boundaries, and limitations to the way that it is used. But at the same time, innovation cannot be, cannot be stopped. The same way that original content creation cannot and will not be restricted. Originality, however, requires time, investment, and money. And the concern here is that with the growing use of AI, content creators will be less and less appreciated monetarily. So, should we embrace the technology, be afraid of it, or fight? Should it be one or the other? Or can these options be a comprehensive response to the risks emerging from the use of AI in our lives? Well, to answer that, I'm going to quote one of my favorite Greek poets, Dinos Christianopoulos, who said, What you didn't do to bury me, but you forgot that I was a seed. Thank you very much for your time here. I hope you enjoyed the content, and if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more discussions around business and technology. See you soon.